would allow the circumstances of your life to become an excuse. People will allow you to do it. But I believe we have personal obligation to make the most of the abilities we have. Jim Abbott. Good afternoon, Dr. Jewell, Dr. Schlangen, Mrs. Lyons, faculty, staff, and my fellow students. I was diagnosed with celiac disease on May 17th of this year, on my 13th birthday. Celiac is an autoimmune disease that makes it so I'm not able to eat any gluten. Some examples of food with gluten include pizza, cookies, crackers, and most cereals. I have had to make many changes to my diet in the last few months. It has become difficult to go out to eat just in case of cross-contamination between a product that usually does not have gluten and a product that does. When I first started feeling sick, I felt not even frustrated. The reason being, nobody likes to be sick, especially when you have no idea what it is. This was not always the case. The first 12 years of my life, I was perfectly fine, and nothing bothered me when I forgot it. I would get an occasional stomach ache, that would go away, but one day this all changed. I went out to eat one night and the kitchen staff was rushing. They gave me undercooked pork, and if you don't know, it is very dangerous to eat pork that isn't cooked the whole way through. The meal that I ate triggered something inside of my body, and every time that I ate gluten or had a meal, I would get a very bad stomach ache. The pain started to get ridiculous, so we went to the doctor. Many tests were done, and they figured out that I was not growing as much or gaining enough weight because I had celiac. This was frustrating and disappointing because I did not know the adjustments that I would have to make to benefit my health. Every day was the start of a new challenge. My family and I were not always sure what contained gluten and what didn't. It took a while to adjust, especially from the standpoint of not being able to eat anything that contained gluten. The hardest part is most definitely cross-contamination. Most of the time, the waiter or the waitress is not sure if the pasta is boiled in separate water or that the pizza is put in a different tray opposed to the regular pizza. These questions turn into a whole big thing, and it's all because I have this allergy. At this point, I was confused and concerned because I was still figuring out how serious celiac is. At the same time, I was concerned about my long-term health. In the few months that I've been on a gluten-free diet, I feel much better and my health has improved. I feel more energized and excited to do things compared to when I felt God and had no clue what was going on. Now that I realize what celiac is, I feel much better and understand that even though it might not be what I want, it is what is best for me. It has allowed me to focus in school and have better health. Celiac is a big sacrifice to make, but adapting my diet has benefited me in many ways. I feel stronger and more energized because my diet now suits what my body needs. On the other hand, it has been the worst thing that's ever happened to me because I can't eat what I want and I have to be so careful about my diet. What this experience has taught me is that making sacrifices can actually lead to a healthier life. It means you're able to do more things that you enjoy and participate in things that you previously were not able to. Instant gratification is never as satisfying as long-term success. If you have to make big adjustments in your life or give up something that you really love, I hope you realize that it might just be the key to a more satisfying life. Thank you.